So today I'm just going to do a little behind the scenes kind of workshop video before I go back to just making more AI related content. And what I'm going to be doing today is building some robot parts. So I need to make cases for my robot. And you can see here that the new version of the robot has this external case. And this is vacuum formed and I make this myself. So basically I'm just going to go over the process of doing that. And this is still for like a prototype version. So yeah. Now in order to vacuum form um, rather large components like that, I needed a pretty big machine. So I have a central form and I believe this is called the 1827. And it's pretty cool because this can just run off of household outlets. And the way that works is that you can see here, it has two separate cords for each heater uh, component and they're hooked into an extension cord and then one that is run from a different area of the house right here. And basically what happens when you turn these on is it's got two large heaters up there and they turn on and heat up. So you'll understand more if you're not familiar with vacuum forming in a second. So I'm gonna let this heat up and talk about some other things. So essentially what this vacuum forming machine does is it heats up a thin bit of plastic. Now for my use case, I'm using polystyrene and it forms it over a shape of something that is called the buck. So essentially this little thin, um, pretty robust case design piece is formed over a buck, which in our purposes would be something like this. Now this is a 3D printed buck and it's just basically the shape of what you want. So you can see one over there where it's still on the buck. And the big problem with doing this with 3D printing is that vacuum form former gets extremely hot. So the plastic that drops down over this is just so hot along with the vacuum pressure that it will easily deform. Now this specific buck right here, I know it will be hard to tell on video, but this has probably about 30 pounds of kitty litter inside of it. And you can see here, it's still deformed. And beyond that, it actually deforms into the infill. So if you print this with anything less than solid infill, it will begin to deform into the divots of the empty space. Now, basically to counter that, and sorry for the odd panning, I'm just going to kind of keep running this. I've done this. So this is essentially that, but flipped upside down. And this is filled with plaster, and the external 3D printed parts of it are 100% infill. So what I'm going to be doing today is vacuum forming this. So the machine's been heating up probably for about one to two minutes now, and it's hard to see, but the heaters will eventually become extremely red. And I have a little temperature thermometer here, and we can see right now just the space in here is 180 to 200 degrees. And to zoom out, you can kind of see that's where my hand is. So this gets extremely hot up around here, and it's just something to be cautious of. I always wear long sleeves and I usually wear gloves, but I'm only gonna be doing one pull tonight, so I don't need to be as concerned about the heat. Now, excuse the sort of wide angle oddity that you're seeing right now, but the next com component of all this is the actual plastic itself that I'm going to be forming from. Now, this is 0 0.30 thickness um, white styrene. So I believe the name for it, like technically is polystyrene. And this is a pretty common material that's used in probably a lot of stuff you touch every day in food packaging and stuff like that. Um, maybe not food, but some other stuff. So the benefit of this is that it's pretty easy to vacuum form, especially for someone at home like me who does not have a professional setup or anything like that. And the downside for my specific use case is that this plastic is like very expensive. So you don't want to mess up at all when you're using it. And you can see part of that reason is because of how large it is. So now we're just actually gonna go ahead and get this baby on the build plate, or not the build plate, but I suppose the forming plate. Now, you'll see that I'm, sorry, struggling a bit. Um, this has over 30 pounds of plaster in it, which is making it extremely heavy. And the other thing is, um, this is probably a no-no, but there's a lot of loose plaster that's gonna get in the machine. So I actually sometimes have to take the machine apart, flip it on its side, and then vacuum the holes to get some of the junk out of there, but sorry, I uh, <laughs> have lost my plastic. I don't know where the shootout is gonna use one. 
All right, well, as this is kind of time sensitive, we can go ahead and do the next steps. So the heaters are fully hot now, as I can tell by one, the extreme heat, and two, that they are uh, red. So you don't always have to put this down. And as a matter of fact, it's probably best to not put this down until the plastic is kind of up there and ready to be formed. So I'll move this over here. And we can talk about getting the plastic in. So this is kind of just like a frame. And basically what happens is you slide the plastic in it and it will create a seal around the plastic so that no air can escape. And the reasons for that will be apparent very soon. So once the plastic's in, and I do apologize for the low camera angle, but I don't have a high tripod, so I'll work on getting one of those. We tighten this hinge here. And then once that's done, our plastic is ready and it will be sort of airtight. So real quick before I do that, so right, you can see where my hand is. That's about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, so very hot. And you can see why plastics like PLA don't really stand a chance for that. So the next thing I do is move this frame up with the plastic in it. And these handles uh, tighten and loosen kind of in a corkscrew manner. So you can tighten this and that will hold the hinge in place. And I do the other side. Basically, this is kind of where you kind of have to get a feel for what's going on. Now the plastic will begin to droop. If the plastic doesn't get hot enough, it won't be flexible enough to form over your shape. If the plastic gets too hot, you risk the vacuum pressure just blowing a hole in it because it gets too thin and the air being sucked through is too strong for the plastic to defend against. So, sorry, I'm sweating bullets here. One, it's hot out. Two, it's hot here. So basically what's going to happen is the plastic's going to droop. You can already see that the plastic is, I don't know if you can, so I'll move the tripod real quick. You can see the plastic is a bit flexible, but we're going to wait till it droops to about right here, because as I do have a larger buck, it does need to be a bit more flexible, if you will. So next step is to get over there and we're pretty much there. So I hit the foot pedal for the vacuum pump. I loosen this and I may have let this get a little too hot, but that's all right. And I hit the pump. And then once it forms, you don't want to keep going because that's when kind of problems happen. And that noise you hear is the seal from the air letting loose as the plastic rehardens. And basically, I'll turn this off for now and we'll notice a few things and I'll just uh, kind of go through them. So here's our finished form. Now with vacuum forming, buck design is very important because if something goes back in under itself, you won't actually be able to get the buck out of the plastic. There's a lot of design considerations. <coughs> Excuse me, it does smell. But uh, I would normally wear a mask, but I'm just doing one form, so no big deal. And you can see if it gets too hot, sometimes stuff like this will happen. So basically, this is not even actually going to be a robot case. What's gonna happen now is I'm going to take this entire thing, fill this with plaster so that I have a completely plaster mold, and then I will have to sand it and finish it and get all these lines and junk out and then use that to vacuum form for those. So <laughs> this is uh, an in-depth process, but something I think personally is really cool. And these vacuum, I mean, a vacuum forming machine this large, you can make really a lot, a lot of stuff. And it's just pretty cool. So you can kind of see any layer lines in the plastic will show through. Um, styrene is relatively forgiving and like, well, this um, thickness of styrene is forgiving in terms of not showing a ton of like um, artifacts and stuff like that. But it's, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I just 
wanted to give a show of this. It is pretty cool. And you can see now, sorry, I'm not using my uh, handheld gyro thing here. So it's not as stable. But like if I, now I can loosen this because at this point the plastic is entirely back to stiff. So. And I just realized I didn't actually show the vacuum part of this, which is like half of the vacuum former. <laughs> it's like half the makeup. So there's a vacuum line that comes right here, and this is connected to the chamber, and that is connected to this vacuum pump right here, which is a Robin Air model, and I have a foot pedal. So basically what happens, and I can do this real quick because there's not an airtight seal, so it won't do anything. I hit this, the pump goes, and that creates, I think, a little vacuum chamber in here, which pulls the hot plastic over whatever is here. So that is essentially how it works, and that's the end result. So this is a rather difficult shape to be making, and also my buck, like the plastic one, it has to be printed in multiple pieces, so you can see glue lines, join lines, and things. So that's why I'm just going to be making it out of plaster. Uh, I can then sand it, and it'll be much more heat resistant as well. See now it's on the table, and like I had been saying, what's going to happen now is I will remove this off of the buck and essentially flip it over, um, put sand around it so that it doesn't flex at all, and then I will fill it with plaster and make a mold that way. And real quick, just finally, here's what it looks like upside down. So this is the side that was facing the plate, and you can see how it looks down here, just to orient. So I'm not going to show actually getting these separated because that is just a, <laughs> a bit difficult, especially because I had neglected to remove some of the indents up here, which were designed for cutting this to the right shape so that it fit the robot properly. So I'm going to have to wrestle with this for a while. I used to just put things in the freezer when I was uh, making my original prototypes and they were little nasty things like this and they were small enough that I would find if I just popped it in the freezer and then <laughs> took it out for some reason it would slide right off the plastic buck. But this is, uh, you can see, far more cumbersome than what we now have. So, yep, that's, uh, that's some vacuum forming. I hope you enjoyed and take care. Hey, thanks for asking. My week's been pretty good overall. Just the usual mix of work and trying to find time for myself.